right. Thanks so much for joining me, Alex uh, Vadu. Um, I'm really happy, actually, you made it out to Tech Open Air. Um, for one, because um, you know I met you just briefly on the street um, at a market, and uh, you you talked about uh, the movie that you were producing. And, and the movie is obviously really well known, Oh Boy, um, won tons of prizes and been, you know, very critically acclaimed movie. Um, but what I found really interesting in the short conversation we had was when you were sort of opening up and talking about how crazy that whole experience was for you uh, to finally sort of get the recognition that you didn't get before uh, for all the movies you've done before and you somehow didn't even know why suddenly you got it for that movie. Can you tell us a little bit about this? Yeah, I think what I what I what I told you is that um, that you know I haven't changed really through this film, but the the perception of myself has changed. But you know I'm still the as professional, unprofessional producer I was before. Um, I haven't been doing so many films before, and uh, I was really lucky that uh, you know I I could hop on this boat on 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 this film. Um, but this film really has changed a lot for me because finally people. For some reason, people give you a lot of respect when you have a successful film. And, and I was just one producer of two producers, and I was just one team member of, like, a hundred in the end. Um, um, but after all, you know, people like to, like to work with people who, are, who have a successful film. They, they trust people more that, that are successful. And, um, yeah, and they, they think that you are basically more creative or that the stuff that you are doing is more interesting, um, which is... Sometimes not, and sometimes it's, it, it is. But uh, the ears open up. I mean, they 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 have the the um, they are willing to listen closer when you s when you say something. And did you have a gut feel when the movie was ready or while you were filming it that this could be a breakthrough for you? No, not at all. Um, uh, when we when I read the book, uh, I really loved the script. Um, that's the only um, that was only the decision maker in this process. Was uh, is it a good story? Do I like it or not? Um, no, no one of us has ever thought about that this film is going to be this successful. We were hoping that you know we find an audience and you know get a couple of thousand admissions, etc. You don't wish for your film that it's not successful, but you know this is uh, uh, over the top. I mean, what people say about the film and what I felt as well was that it, it really got the the zeitgeist of Berlin right in a way. I mean, there's so many movies about Berlin, but this one sort of. Um, at least, you know, one angle of the city got so well of uh, people like the main actor, right? Um, and, and, you know, and how does the city sort of uh, reflect in the movie for you personally? For me, it's, uh, it's timeless in a way. Um, and I haven't seen um, Berlin as pretty as in this film, not meaning that it's really clean, but it's, you know, every dirty area also has some kind of a charm. And uh, and I see these uh, these images of Berlin, and I really love, I really love my city. Then, um, and I think that we somehow managed to find some poetry in uh, in Berlin in the backyards that normally you just walk or pass by and you say, oh my God, it's a dirty wall. But if you look closer, there's a lot of creativity that people randomly or unintentionally sometimes just put on the wall and, and, and you just pass by every day. And because also it's black and white, you have a different perspective to your, to your city. You know, it's not the city that you see every day because you see color and this is black and white. So you, you take an, a different look and closer look and sometimes things that you pass by now are more in the focus because it's not about the color, it's about the contrast. Is that a decision you make from the start, from the absolute start, that it will be shot in black and white? It was, it was always written in the script, um, and that was the decision of uh, Jan Ole, of the director, um, who was basically the creative mind behind this film, um, and also the, all these uh, zeitgeist that he put in. It was, always, it was all in the script. And speaking now a little bit about uh, also the theme of tech open air, um, retro futurism, um, how does technology influence the music industry? I mean, that's obviously a really wide question. Um, maybe better phrased, uh, what are really the, th the two, three key points um, and um, what do you think you know, um, should a dialogue look like between technologists um, and filmmakers? Well, the, the film business is still, uh, um, I, I wouldn't say it's that modern anymore. We are now starting, or we basically we started two years ago uh, to digitalize the cinemas. 
why there was internet already and why there was cinema prints and uh, uh, digital copies already, etc. So it's the, the film industry is not the quickest industry to adapt to new technologies. On the other hand, um, we can we can contact our our potential audience much much easier and much quicker than we could ever before. Mm -hmm. I can release a film basically te or technically in South America within one click mm. uh, on iTunes and then I can, you know, the people can watch my film. It wasn't, it wasn't like this before, like even not 10 years or 20 years ago. And is there, there's obviously great parallels between the music and the, the film industry and the way that technology disrupts these industries, right? And there's a famous speech by Mark Zuckerberg where he says that basically social disruption and the internet disruption go basically by industry. So uh, music was the first with Napster uh, to be completely disrupted by technology. Uh, and obviously the, the record uh, selling business uh, is in, in steady decline ever since. Uh, media, um, not just film, is probably the second of the big industries that are being affected, print media obviously. Um, is there um, a lot of exchange between the music and the film industry um, in, in sort of learning from the music industry where it, all this happened maybe three, four years earlier? Um, there's, there are big differences between um, a, a song and a film and it comes to... Uh, it's it's much more less direct. I mean, it's you know you can you can have a musician here on stage. You can have mm -hmm. actors on stage mm -hmm. and make a film. So from making a, a piece of or a song takes you five minutes. You know, if you are really quick and you can you can upload it and then it's out there. Making a film takes you years. Mm -hmm. But what we can learn is, or what we have to learn is that if we don't do anything, we are losing. Uh, our customers, mm. and um, and that's why um, um, why ripping and and uh, illegal streaming is so popular. If they want to see a film, they see the film. We had Oh Boy already on YouTube. Somebody uploaded it, and um, and we managed to take it down. But it's also on other platforms illegally. So if they want to see it, they see. It. There's no other way around. Mm. But if you can offer them something that they can pay for it, I'm pretty sure that not all of these illegal downloaders would pay for it, but uh, uh, but there's a sum that you know you can you can uh, you can catch from these illegal platforms and put them on your own platform. And what is it that you talked about today um, at Tech Open Air? Um, you, you talked about some key learnings, right, in in production, and um, that are probably uh, transferable to startups as well. I uh, I talked about different stuff, and um, I have to admit it wasn't the most structured speech I, I gave. Um, but I also talked about honesty and uh, authenticity because this is something that I would say is, is the, one of the key uh, the keys to the success of Oh Boy is that it's, it's authentic. It's it's the portrait of the city is authentic. The emotions are authentic. It's honest, honestly made. We were always honest about it. The director was very authentic and honest about it. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I think this is something that that transports to the audience without even them knowing. You know, they don't know if we were honest about it, but they can feel something. And I think that if you do something um, also with technologies, with yeah. apps, that, that has more than just the money aspect that you want to share something, then uh, I think you, you, there's a bigger chance to be successful. And maybe final question, uh, we just um, said maybe you have some tips for event organizers because it seems like a movie set um, to organizing a conference um, there's a lot of similarities because I, I mentioned to you that the first hours uh, of, of a festival um, are always, uh, it takes some time to get in the flow until the whole team is in the flow and everybody knows what they do. Um, any final tips for an event organizer out there? Well, basically, you can influence everything. You have to relax. I think if you relax as the main organizer or the head, then uh, the others are able to relax. If you're not relaxed, then... Uh, um, nobody else that is working with you and for you can can relax. So very good tip. Know, I'll it take easy. it to my yeah. I'll take it to my. Thanks so much, Alex. Thank you. Thank you.